Hey folks, let's discuss and unpack the new moon in Libra happening on September 28, 2019. So as usual, for these videos, I'm off camera and doing this as a screencast so you can follow the chart and have a better visual appreciation of the aspects involved. So what you're looking at is the chart for the Libra new moon happening on September 28. Now, with a new moon, we know that the sun and the moon are joined up together and at this new moon we find the sun and the moon joined up at 5 degrees and 20 minutes of Libra pictured here in the seventh house of the chart and as usual we use natural houses in these videos as they are just simpler to follow for our purposes and of course the seventh house of the chart being naturally associated with the sign of Libra the seventh sign in the progression of the zodiac all right so let's describe the configuration here of this lunation so first is that we notice the very strong Libra emphasis here so the Sun Moon Mercury and Venus in Libra and when we look to the ruler of this moon Venus she is in Libra in her home sign really amplifying the Libra signature here so and doubly emphasizing the domain of relationship so Venus and Mercury are conjunct we discussed this in the astrology of September part two so they're conjunct emphasizing this idea of dialogue and interpersonal exchange between people and as we also discussed in the astrology of September part two we see that Venus is square Saturn so we see on the chart here that at the new moon the ruler of this moon Venus is at 17 degrees of Libra and is still dancing in the square with Saturn at 13 degrees Capricorn a Saturn which has just changed direction going direct and at the time of this new moon is slower and more concentrated in its expression so we have a backstory here the idea of this moon cycle supporting a serious look a serious appraisal of our relationship so the idea of coming to terms with coming face to face with the realities of our relationships and as we often say Saturn uh, forces a confrontation with what is and we have this in the context of relationships Venus in Libra and of course with Venus we have two tones we have our psychological relationship to personal worth self-esteem value the Venus Taurus matrix and we also have Venus being representative of our approach to relationships and our needs in relationships so the Venus Libra matrix and of course we see how the two are related in other words our psychological sense of personal worth and value self-esteem all of that impacts on how we show up in our relationships with others so the two tones of Venus are linked together in the psyche so Venus is square Saturn uh, the evolutionary imperative of facing what is confronting the realities of how we show up in relationships and our emotional needs in relation to other people so we see here too that Venus at 17 degrees Libra is engaging Pluto at 20 degrees Capricorn in the square so Venus square Pluto suggesting that as we confront the realities that Saturn of our relationships we are faced with yet another evolutionary imperative the need for transformation Pluto so perhaps transformation of the relationship perhaps a need for release letting go so Saturn reveals what isn't working it tends to reveal the fault lines in any structure so this time we are dealing with the relational structures uh, in our lives Venus so Pluto is the impetus to release to let go to renew to regenerate to let what isn't working die to let the old die so Venus to Saturn and Pluto 
and at the time of the new moon we would have just passed through the gateway of the fall equinox so initiating a time of release fall and because it's so appropriate for our reflections i'm going to read you a little excerpt on the equinox a small excerpt here on the equinox it says now is the time to let anything in your life fall away that is no longer useful or needed for the emerging expression of who you are it says allow yourself to gradually shed what has become burdensome and what is no longer congruent with the purpose of your soul it says look especially at your material possessions and that's a domain of venus and be brutally honest with yourself as you discern which of these can be given away or somehow released and it also goes on to say uh, consider shedding relationships or aspects of relationships that have served their purpose and are no longer viable so it says with release comes a sense of being much lighter just like the trees that openly bear their nakedness once their leaves have departed and give room for whatever new life is ready to be birthed following a period of quiet and gestation. So it says, let go of whatever has outlived its purposefulness. So we have all of these threads dovetailing here. So Venus in aspect to Saturn and Pluto. The need for looking at what isn't working, the need for a confrontation with what is, and out of that confrontation coming a willingness to release a Plutonian psychic process, which we see in nature as autumn or fall. All right, so there's that. Now, the sun and moon are opposite Chiron in Aries. So we see on the chart here that the sun and moon at five degrees of Libra are opposite Chiron at three degrees of Aries. So an opposition here on the Aries Libra axis. So self in relation to other. So with this new moon cycle, we are confronted with the idea of other people in our lives revealing to us where we are wounded, that's Chiron, and where we are in need of healing, Chiron. So this new moon supports us in looking at the pain points in our psyches that are powerfully revealed or unearthed in the context of our relationships and the mirroring effect inherent in relationships. So through other people, we discover parts of ourselves. So through intimacy of relating Libra Venus, we discover parts of who we are. And we discover those parts reflected back to us. So especially the parts of ourselves that are in need of healing and integration. And as we said in the astrology of September part two, relationships are profound sites of spiritual growth and transformation. But we have to first know what needs healing and relationships with others invariably bring that stuff out. So perhaps what may need healing is our ability to listen to our hearts. Perhaps what may need healing is our ability to open to love. Perhaps what needs healing is our notion of how deserving we are. Perhaps what needs healing is our inability to ask for what we need or to honor our own emotional needs and desires. So perhaps too, what needs healing is our judgment toward ourselves in the context of our relationships or what may need healing is the judgment of another with whom we are in relationship. Now, we see something else here. The sun and moon at five degrees of Libra are in a tight in conjunct with Uranus at five degrees of Taurus. So in conjunct or quincunx, 150 degree angular relationship and as uranus triggers this new moon 
what is supported here is the process of emotional recognition and revelation. So with the inconjunct and Uranus here, we have this process of certain awareness emerging or breaking into the foreground. So awareness that we may have uh, previously held back or held at bay, sort of stuffing it down into the far reaches of our psyches, preventing it from being consciously recognized. And as I mentioned in the astrology of September part two, I shared that in working with people, time after time, I've noticed that inconjuncts often call our attention to what is at the periphery of our conscious awareness. So what is at the periphery, the outside, the fringes of our awareness that wants to burst in to be fully consciously recognized, but in a sense, we aren't allowing it to come in. So perhaps we are afraid of what this new awareness would mean for us. So at this new moon, we have a dynamic of a sort of tense relationship between our present state of awareness and what is creeping up in our peripheral vision. So inconjuncts often show the work that we have to do, which is to adjust our consciousness to admit new data and awareness. And as we said previously, we have a double emphasis here because the planet Uranus itself has to do with what was at the threshold of consciousness that is ripe and ready to come bursting in, in the form of revelations and discoveries and insights. So at this new moon, we have the theme here of emotional discovery, Uranus to the moon. So because inconjuncts often show where there is active psychic resistance to allowing new data to emerge into our awareness, perhaps at this new moon, we may ask ourselves a few pertinent questions. What am I resisting? What emotional discoveries about my relationships am I resisting? What emotional discoveries about my relationships am I resisting, which may be painful, that's Chiron, yet also healing, Chiron. Healing, that's Chiron, yet liberating, Uranus. As we take a hard look at our relationships and how we show up in them, Venus, Saturn, what new awareness previously buried or resisted can now come forward? And how will this new awareness demand that we transform our relationships, Venus, Pluto? So the moon is an index of our emotional security. So what we need for a sense of security and Uranus to the moon can represent a process of new emotional recognition that can upset or disturb our sense of security but yet still that new emotional recognition is a sort of healing chironic medicine if we allow that new emotional recognition to do its transformational work within us all right so there are our reflections on this new moon and as usual, reminding you that I'm available for private astrological counseling consultations and links to that are in the description box below. And of course, if you'd like these new and full moon reflections to be sent to your inbox, you can find details on how to join my email list in the description box below as well. So wishing you a peaceful new moon, a healing new moon. And until next time, talk soon. Bye.